Welcome and thank you for choosing ACTS as your place of worship today. I'm so excited that you are joining the online family. So thank you for inviting us into your home, office, car or wherever you are streaming from today. I must say today there's a lot of excitement here at our Glen Austin, that's Midrand North Campus, um, because we have a wonderful guest speaker called Dr. John Bosman, all the way from the United States, and um, he will be speaking to us about a heavenly download. Now, I must say it's been such an amazing time with him during our first service, and I want you to invite some people to come join us today here on our live stream and um, so won't you just take out your phone right now and uh, just go and share this stream you know when we share a stream we have a wonderful wonderful opportunity to be able to impact somebody's life for eternity so won't you just do that right now and you know while you have your phone in hand also you're able to comment and uh, tell us where you are watching from it would be wonderful to interact with you through the comments so please be sure to do that send us some emojis some heart emojis some clapping and hallelujah emojis we really would want to just see you interact with us today here on the x online family we're so grateful that you took the time to come and be with us now also i would like to remind us of of the wonderful revival meetings that we have been having man it's been absolutely stunning every wednesday evening at 6 30 at all of our campus and now if you have not been you need to come the lord has really just been blessing people touching people's lives and um, it's been absolutely stunning so if you have not please come join us that's 6 30 maybe you're in another country or you can't join us then uh, you can also watch it online we're looking forward to see you online and remember to share that stream now maybe god has touched your life in this time and you have a testimony that you would like to share i want to encourage you to do so send us an email that's online family at xchurch.co.za or you can just take a video of yourself on your own phone just uh, take a video telling us what god has done and you know it's uh, what you do then is you go on to our ask acts whatsapp line you'll see the number on the screen just go on there and um, when you type the word testify or testimony we will help you to upload this video so that we can see it so once you do that come and testify and uh, come and share the goodness of god and what is done in your life i've been reading and uh, watching uh, quite a number of testimonies and it's just wonderful to see how god is busy working now also i want to remind you that we have a hay meeting right after this service if you're watching it live let's come and join us for the hay meeting we'll put the the sign up and the login details into the screen and also I want to remind us that going forward from next week we will only be streaming live our first service that's the 8 a.m. service South African time and we will not be live streaming the 945 service so this is the last one that uh, you'll be able to watch next week it's only live at 8 a.m. and then you can download or watch the video later so join us for 8 a.m. it would be wonderful to see you there it's always nicer when it's live and we can interact with each other I think that's going to be wonderful I see many people signing up many people um, here today joining us a very big hello for somebody watching from Austria we have somebody from France watching and uh, then some uh, quite a few quite a number of people from Durban so we're so excited that you are joining us today also from Centurion and Midran right here so we are so excited that you joined us now praise is starting so won't you just get up out of your seats and let's engage in praise today let us lift up our hands and worship Father we thank you we exalt your name Father, we pray as we worship and as we praise that it may be acceptable before you. We want to please you and you alone this morning. In Jesus. 
Jesus' name and everyone with faith say, Amen. Amen.
Beginning Acts Church and welcome to another special Sunday morning. If it is your first time... Goodness, if you've just joined us, I'm so glad that you did. And um, this is a wonderful platform and you are so welcome to the X Online family. This is a platform we are using to be able to engage with each other and to be able to serve from anywhere in the world. So thank you for joining. And if you would like to connect with us today, you can do so by scanning the QR code with your phone camera and uh, then you just follow the link that pops up. When you do that, you will find a variety of options to choose from, such as, for example, you can join an online live group. You can also even do training and even serve online from anywhere in the world. So I'm so glad that you joined us today. And I'm just looking and um, thank you for everybody who decided to send us some wonderful, wonderful comments. And uh, I see we have people watching from France today welcome and uh, even all the way from Austria Austria I see some people from Cape Town I'm so glad if you joined remember that we have a campus right there in Cape Town so that would be wonderful to see you there also a very big hello to uh, everybody watching close to home like our people watching from Midrand people watching from Centurion we're excited that you are joining us. Evie all the way from China watching. Thank you for joining us today. And remember we have a hay meeting right after this service. You'll see the contact details in the comments. Now let's go into worship and uh, let's allow the Holy Spirit to come and speak to us. The Lord just thank Him this morning. Father we lift up your name on high. You are worthy to be praised this morning. Father, you are the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and Omega. We cast our pride. We cast our crowns, Jesus. As we worship you, Lord, King of glory. We lift up our voices. We lift up our hands. And we say, Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are the matchless one. Lord, you are the uncreated one. Lord, we exalt your name. Come on, just lift up your voice to the Lord. Just tell him he's worthy. Lord, you are Adonai. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We give you the glory, Jesus. Be thou honored, Almighty Jesus, in this place. We stand in reverence of you, Lord.
Holy Spirit, come, presence yourself among us. We ask that you would move from person to person in the only way that you can. Speak to our hearts. We open our hearts to hear 
all that you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, we give you all the honor and glory. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord one more praise offering today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you greet a person sitting next to you and then you can take your seats. So good to see you all here today. Peter sends his love and his greetings. He's with uh, the team in, in Durban uh, today. So they've been ministering there from Friday. They've been having incredible, wonderful meetings. The Lord is moving greatly among them. And uh, so we're so excited to hear the report back that he will give after this. Okay, we're going to just get ready to take up our tithes and our offerings, first of all. So if we can just get ready uh, to do that, and we're going to pray together. Father, we thank you that all good things come from you. Father, thank you that you give seed to the sower. And so, Father, as we sow the seed today, I thank you that you would water it. And, Father, that there would be a harvest to the seed. Thank you, Father, that every need that is represented in this place here today would be met. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Thank you that you provide for us every day. So, Father, we commit this now into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ushers. You can go ahead with that. Right, Peter's asked me to, to have a little family chat with all of us today um, because next week we've got another wonderful guest, Evangelist Levi Lutz. Do you remember Evangelist Levi Lutz from CFAN? He was with us a while back, and uh, he's going to be visiting uh, South Africa to oversee the, the graduates of um, the, 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 the evangelism boot camp students in Cape Town. And so he's passing through here, and he will be with us next week, Sunday. But we've noticed that something happens uh, when we have an evangelist with us. Us, and they start speaking about the lost. You know, there's a certain response that we need to have in our hearts when we hear about the lost being saved. You know, in Luke chapter 15, we read three stories about lost things. There was the lost son, there was the lost coin, and there was the lost sheep. And each of these stories ends with a great rejoicing. When the shepherd finds the sheep, he puts it on the shoulders and it says there was a rejoicing. When the son was found, it says there was a great big party that took place. Amen. When that lost coin was found, it says the widow brought everybody in. She invited the friends and the neighbors to come and to celebrate and rejoice. And so when the lost come in and the lost get found, there needs to be a party. There needs to be a celebration and a rejoicing. You know that word rejoice means to spin around wildly under emotion. That's the kind of rejoicing that God rejoices over your life, over my life. And that's how we ought to rejoice when we hear about the lost being saved. Amen. And so we are going to start celebrating to another level when we hear about souls being saved. We don't want to be like that eldest son. You know, the eldest son, he was the party pooper. When his younger brother came back, he was like, what's the big deal? What's this all about? Well, the big deal is that the reason that all of heaven pauses for a moment to celebrate that lost soul is because the angels recognize, realize the torment of hell that this person has been saved from. They realize the incredible destiny that has been saved and the love that this fa the Father in heaven has for this person. And they've entered into this love relationship. And that's why the whole of heaven rejoices. And so we are going to practice in a moment for next week when we hear evangelist Levi Lutz starting to tell us about all these souls. It's so easy to just hear numbers, numbers, numbers. But every soul needs to be rejoiced over. 
Amen. And so we are going to rejoice today prophetically over the souls that you and I know that we are trusting the Lord for right now. Maybe people in our families that we are trusting for the Lord to reach. We are going to rejoice prophetically. Call that things that be not just as though they are by the sound of our rejoicing. And so whenever we rejoice, whatever you celebrate, you attract towards you. So if you want to see those people saved and somebody else is getting saved, celebrate that. Celebrate what you see around you. So we're going to, on the count of three, we're going to let out a sound of rejoicing. We're going to rejoice over the souls that are going to get saved, over those souls that we trust in God for, over the souls that have been saved that we maybe just didn't rejoice as much as what we should have rejoiced at the time. Are you ready to do that? Church, one, two, three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice. Hallelujah. I think we're ready for evangelist Levi Lutz to come now. Amen. We're going to rejoice next week with all these incredible things because we are trusting the Lord for a great harvest, church. There is a great harvest that's coming in. The Lord has spread out the nets. We parted those nets, bringing in the great harvest, and we need to rejoice over these sinners that are coming to Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Then just a reminder of... Our marriage conference that is coming up next week, Saturday. Hallelujah. I was as surprised as you when Peter announced what the topic that I was given to talk about. I didn't volunteer that. He did on the platform. That was the first time I heard about it. And then I heard that I'm talking about sex. I was like, really, am I? <laughs> anyway, but I must say the, the amount of registrations boomed suddenly. It just like really increased, you know. So, so uh, y'all come here all about it. So we're going to have a great time together. And I really want to encourage you if you are married, if you're about to be married, you don't want to miss this. We've also got Pastor Sibu Sisu, and we're going to be speaking about covenants and about blended families and all the juicy parts that go in between. Amen. So come and join us and make sure to sign up for that. Well, today we've got a, a wonderful anointed man of God that is going to be ministering to us today. And it's uh, my privilege to introduce to you Dr. Uh, John Bossman. And uh, he's not only has he come from the States, although he's South African born, but he now uh, has immigrated to the States. He has with him his two sons and his one son's two sons as well. Isn't that incredible? Three generations represented here, <laughs> serving the Lord together. Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to say, all of us, let's say, as for me, and my family, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Let this prophesy over every one of our families here today in Jesus' name. Lineage of blessing. Amen. Maybe you haven't come from a whole line of born again believers, but you be the first one to start that line in Jesus' name. Amen. What a blessing. And and this man of God that is going to minister to us, he has um, uh, ministered and, and pastored many churches, even here in South Africa, and then later immigrated to the United States where he was a pastor of a very fast-growing church. And uh, so he is an authority on church growth and equipping the body of Christ and leaders uh, in, in ministry. And so it's such a great privilege. And what I love, uh, just from what I saw, and what I've heard uh, as I've been spending a bit of time with him, just such a ministry of the Holy Spirit. Church, that's what it's all about. Without the Spirit, there is nothing. And so I'm trusting the Lord for something new, something fresh. I want you to open your heart and receive all that the Lord has for you today in Jesus' name. Church, let's stand together and help me welcome Dr. John Bosman. Amen. <laughs>
Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. I said, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Just give, slap somebody a high five and say, you've never looked better in your whole life. So good to see you. God bless you. You may be seated. What a wonderful honor and delight to be with you this morning here at Acts Church. I love the name already, Acts. It means the power of the Holy Spirit. I have to say real briefly, I wish I had about 30 minutes to say more about the fact how much I honor and respect your pastor, Apostle Peter DeFin, great man of God. I highly respect him. I love him. I love his spirit. I love his attitude. And after I'd been meeting with him a few times, I thought if he was that great and grand and kind, I'm looking forward to the day to meet his wife. And so this morning, I met Apostle Tammy. And wow, my expectations were not disappointed. What a great woman of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I told her after the first service, I'd like to hear her preach. I think she is some kind of a preacher. And you know, I've, I've always said that behind every successful man in life stands a surprised mother-in-law. <laughs> but I thank God for Apostle Tammy. I'm glad my children are with me. I don't know, my younger son is somewhere, probably taking picture, pictures, videos, whatever. But here's my oldest son, John. <laughs> and his older son, John. And my name is John. So we are very scriptural. First John, second John, and third John. And then his second son, Andrew. All of them great men of God. Well, I don't want to take up much time the preaching of the word because I believe God wants to accomplish something great today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I ask God that these next few moments will be life changing and that some life will be changed forever. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you this morning on a subject that I have entitled, A Heavenly Download. Because I'm expecting God to download something from heaven into your life today. And for that reason, I truly and honestly believe with my whole heart that somebody here listening to me right now is going to receive a divine impartation that's going to change your heart and life and destiny forever. Amen. Because we realize that we are all on a journey together in this life. And we are fervently headed toward a clearly defined destiny, energized by divine purpose and driven by inner conviction. And I have found in life that as we journey through life, there are moments that God chooses to divinely intersect our paths, to do something beyond our human comprehension and our own thinking and imagination. Some of those moments that God intersects our divine path is through what I call impartation. 
And it is through impartation that God many times intersects our life journey and does something to us that cannot be done in the natural or in the human. Because it becomes a divine moment by the choice of a divine one that holds everything in his hands. And it's that impartation that takes us to where we have never been and where we can only go by God's intervention in changing where we are so that he could take us to where he wants us to be. Now for that impartation to take place, then uh, there has to be a heavenly download. There has to be a, a certain moment uh, and thy section in the moment of our lives when God does something greater than we can ever expect. Now one way that God positively intersects our lives is by what I've said, divine impartation. Everybody say divine impartation. Divine. I, I'm wanting you to say that because I'm not talking about human impartation. I'm, I'm not talking about psychological impartation. I'm talking about divine impartation. The, uh, uh, impartation that comes from the throne room of Almighty God. Numbers 27, verses 18 through 20, say it like this. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hand on him. Have him stand before Eliezer the priest and the entire assembly, commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority. Romans 1 verse 11 in the NIV says, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. And I believe that's what's going to happen here today. I believe I'm not here just because Pastor De Defend invited me graciously to be with you. I, I don't believe you are here just because it's Sunday. You're not here because you come all the time. That may be the case, but do you realize what all could have happened to keep you away from being here? But God made it possible for you to be here and for me to be here because God has a moment of divine intervention in your life to do a mighty impartation from the throne room of God so that you can be propelled to the greater things that that God has for you in your life. <laughs> Impartation, I believe, is, is a manner of getting closer to where God wants you to be. And there are some people listening to me right now. You are not yet fully and completely at the place where God wants you to be. God has much more in store for you. God has much better big and bigger things in store for you. And I believe today through impartation, God is make, going to make it possible for you to reach the higher height and even go to the deeper depths so that you can become everything that God has intended for you to become. And today is the day it's going to happen in your life. If you've been struggling, I'm telling you today, something is going to happen. The bondages are going to break. The shackles are going to be destroyed. You're going to be delivered and set free. If you believe that, give the Lord a shout of praise. But the good thing about impartation is that impartation brings us into God's purposes quickly. It's a means of taking us from where we are and in a moment of time shifting us into another realm of purpose and opportunity. And when I'm talking about impartation, I'm not talking about something that's going to take forever. I'm not talking about necessarily even experiencing a process. I am talking about something that's going to happen in a moment of time. 
And somebody listening to me right now, in a moment of time, something is going to turn on on your inside. And you're going to realize God is doing something that I've never experienced before. And before this service is over, there's going to be a divine impartation of supernatural power of God that's going to flood your life. And you're going to begin to see a life that is changed by the power of God. And there's going to be new faith on your inside to the point where you're going to stop telling God about the size of your mountain and begin to tell your mountain about the size of your God. There's going to be an impartation of faith. There's going to be an impartation of ability in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say it like this. You're not going to leave the same way that you came in Jesus' name. If you believe that, shout to the Lord and give him good praise. We realize that we all function through the ability of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do ministry without the Holy Spirit power. No one is so foolish as to believe that we can do church without the Holy Spirit. What is it that puts the wind back into our sails? What is that that makes us long for more? What is that divine energy? Let me tell you, it is the breath of Almighty God. John 20, 22 says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And today I'm believing that God is going to breathe over this congregation. Well, I think you did not get it. Let me try and say it to, to this part of the congregation. This half. I'm saying I'm going to believe God that he's going to breathe over this congregation. Let me give this side another shot. I said I'm believing God that he's going to breathe over this congregation. Because God is about ready to do something beyond our thinking and our imagination. Because our God is a good God. Our God is a great God. Our God is a mighty God. Our God is an awesome God. He's an ever-failing God. He's an ever-changing God. He's worthy to be praised. If you believe that, give Him some praise. Give Him some praise. Hallelujah. It's the presence of God that makes all the difference in our lives. You will never be in His presence without your cause being advanced or without being lifted higher personally. It is the breath of God, the pneuma, the Spirit of God that brings forth divine impartation that makes the difference. And that is why the enemy today is trying to snuff out the breath of God in our churches. But I want to say, try as hard as you can, you're not going to snuff out the breath in Acts Church. Well, thank God for three amens and a few nods. I want to say that again. Enemy, try as hard as you can, but you're not going to snuff out the breath of God in Acts Church. Hallelujah. Because I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, we desperately need to experience the breath of God in our lives once again. Please understand. That when I talk about impartation, that impartation is a work of grace. It's something that God does. I cannot impart something into your life at my will and your desire. I, I, I cannot call you for the ministry. 
Only God calls you for the ministry. I cannot do the things of God. Scripturally, we've read that. I can lay hands on you. Apostle Peter can. Apostle Tammy can. Other men and women of God can. And they do and they should. But that's all we can do. Lay hands on you. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. But the work is a work of grace. It's a work of God. And when impartation takes place, it's not some of my spirit that I give you. When I lay hands on you, it's God's own spirit that flows into your life. When, when it comes to the anointing, I cannot give you my anointing. Because I, it's not my anointing. It's his anointing that's resting upon my life. But the good news is God has an anointing meant just for you. The, your own anointing that God gives to you. So in impartation, it's a work of grace. I can pray with you. I can encourage you. I can teach you. But ultimately, it is God that does the work. It is God that saves. It is God that fills with the Holy Spirit. It's God that anoints. It is God that does the impartation. And that's why I fully believe that some impartation is going to take place in this congregation before we get to the end of the service today. Somebody is going to sense that. Somebody is going to know that. Timothy, or rather Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.6. He says, Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the laying on of my hands. And it can happen, as I said, through the laying on of hands. But I want to say to you today that even now as I speak, something is already beginning to happen on your inside. I said it before and I want to say it again. Impartation uh, usually occurs instantaneously. It's a sudden transfer from heaven. A download from the throne room of God. I'm talking about biblical impartation this morning. 1 Timothy 4.14 says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given or imparted to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. And I want you to realize today that when God does a divine impartation, he does it in a miraculous way and you will not even doubt that it is God. You will know momentarily it is is God beyond the shadow of any doubt. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is a good example. When you were filled with the Holy Spirit, there was a divine impartation that, that, that took place immediately. It was not a process. You didn't have to go learn a new language. You didn't have to go to school. In a moment of time, there was an impartation, a baptism, an infilling of the Holy Spirit, and you began to speak in other tongues. That was a divine impartation. And today, I believe there can be an impartation of the gifts of the, of the calling of God into the ministry and to function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I believe today there's going to be an impartation in people's lives that are going to propel you to a higher level than you've ever been to reach further than you've ever reached and go deeper than you've ever gone. And I believe today when God breathes over this congregation, there's going to be a breath of the miraculous. There's going to be a breath of, 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 of miracles and signs and wonders. And I believe in the name of Jesus when God breathes over this congregation and there's an impartation. I believe today that cancer is going to flee. I believe, I believe today that bodies are going to be healed. Ulcers are going to dry up. Organs are going to be healed. Backs are going to be healed. Eyes are going to open. Ears are going to open. I believe God is going to save some people today. Fill people with the Holy Spirit. I believe as God breathes in this impartation, people are going to receive an unction of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, shout to the Lord and give Him praise.
Divine impartation often occurs through the spoken word. Because I believe that there is a realm of revelation of the Holy Spirit. That even through the spoken word slams into your spirit and releases miraculous power on your inside. Acts 10, 44 says, while Peter was still speaking, everybody say speaking. speaking. Say it a little louder, say speaking. speaking. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. I believe right now, even as I speak, Something is already happening. Somebody can already sense that. Even as, as I am speaking now, there's something turning on your inside. Perhaps a feeling of excitement, a sense of expectation. Because through the spoken word, impartation is taking place. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, there's power in the spoken word. When you speak the word, things begin to happen. And I want to say to you, never ever underestimate the potential of one encounter with God. I want to say that again. Never underestimate the potential of one encounter with God. When you woke up this morning, the sun rose in the eastern sky like it always does, but you had no idea that today is going to be your day, that your life is going to change forever. What is going to happen? There's going to be a heavenly down low. I want to try and land this plane. How many of you remember evangelist Reinhard Bonker? Can I see your hand way high? Evangelist Reinhard and I were big friends for many years. When he was a missionary still in Masiru Lesotho, he was challenged one day after he had arranged a huge healing crusade in Masiru. And he invited a South African evangelist to come and pray for the sick. But when Reinhard went to go and pick him up at the hotel, the evangelist was packing his car and he was getting ready to come back home. And I said, but you've got to come with me. The service is about ready. To, and he said, I'm sorry, I can't go. The Holy Spirit told me to go home. I can't go. I cannot go. The Holy Spirit told me go home. Well, I cannot give you all the detail. We don't have that time other than to tell you that Reinhardt left despondent in conflict and frustrated, knowing that he had to go back and tell the people, the evangelist left and went home, sorry, the service is canceled. But on his way back, he was praying and crying out to God. And in his frustration in that moment, God spoke to Reinhard and he said to him, Reinhard, my word in your mouth is just as powerful as my word in my own mouth. Just speak my word. Reinhard was shocked. He said, God, if that is you, will you tell me that one more time? God usually doesn't repeat anything, but that day he did. And he said again, Reinhard, my word in your mouth is as powerful as my own word 
in my mouth. Speak my word. Reinhardt went to that congregation now filled with the Holy Spirit anointing and unction and that day he had never prayed for people to be healed. He had never seen a miracle in his life in his own ministry but that day he was unctioned by the word of God now in his mouth. He stepped to the edge of the platform and declared over that whole crowd in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I command you to be healed in that moment healing broke out of that whole congregation and the power I said the power I said the power of Almighty God was released and glory broke out I'm here to say to you somebody here I said somebody here today is going to receive that unction that impartation and your life is never going to be the same again. Is there somebody hungry for that heavenly download? I said, is there somebody that is hungry for that heavenly down? You're not hearing me. I'm saying, is there somebody is there somebody? Is there somebody that's ready for that heavenly download? Then jump to your feet. If you want more of God, get to your feet. Jump to your feet. Throw your hands up in the air and begin to call upon God. Wait, wait. I, don't say, I didn't say whisper to God. I said lift your hands way high. Lift your head way high. Now lift your voice way high. Begin to cry out to God. Say it out loud. God, I am hungry for a heavenly download. Now quickly, if it's okay with you, get a hold of the hands of the people standing next to you. Cross the aisles. It's only an aisle, it's not a river. Keisha, there's an anointing right now. I said there's an anointing in this place right now. Just for one minute. Keep those hands joined and for one minute pray out loud in the spirit. I cannot hear you. Come on. Release, release the glory of God. Now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for a mighty unction of the Holy Spirit upon this congregation. I'm asking you, Lord, for heavenly download. I'm asking you now for divine impartation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You spirit of cancer, I command you, leave. You spirit of infirmity, I command you by the authority of Jesus, leave. You spirit of addiction, we come against you and we command you leave leave let the power of god come upon this congregation
Now lift those hands and give the Lord a shout, a shout, a shout of praise. Amen. Come on, shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. He's setting the captives free. your power, your anointing, that it would reside upon everyone here, that as we leave this place and we walk into our homes, that we walk in with a manifestation of your peace, with a manifestation of your power, with a manifestation of your word upon our mouth. Thank you, Father, that as we speak your word, Father, we would see you perform it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, while every eye is still closed, every head is bowed, if you're in this place today and you don't know yet Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you haven't had a relationship with Him, you've never asked Him to come into your heart and wash you of your sins, He's in this place today and He wants to meet with you. So on the count of three, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand, wave it at me, and put it down again, and we're going to pray a prayer together and ask Jesus to come into your heart. So if that's you here today, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Thank you. I see those hands. I see those hands all across the auditorium. If you want to know Jesus today, raise your hand to Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't fight that tugging in your heart. If the Lord is knocking at the door of your heart today, you need to let Him in. Just raise your hand where you are. That's right, on the balcony, in the mother's room. Amen. Church, I want us to pray this prayer together, along with everybody that has raised their hand. Let's say, Father in heaven, thank you for sending your Son Jesus Christ to die for my sin I ask you to forgive me of all sin that I've committed that you would wash me cleanse me in the blood of Jesus and Jesus I invite you today to come into my life and to be my Lord and Savior thank you that from today I'm a child of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's rejoice. Such an amazing, amazing service we had today. And if you are one of those who just prayed that wonderful prayer and gave your heart to the Lord, I want to tell you that all of heaven is rejoicing with you today. And we are so excited that you made this very, very important decision. Now, I must say, I want to send you a free gift. If that was you, I want to send you that gift. So won't you just scan the QR code and... Uh, select an option where it says I gave my heart to Jesus today uh, I would like to send you a free gift to help you in your walk with God and to show you what's next and how you can grow with God so please let me know that would be wonderful and um, for everybody who joined today I'm so grateful that you took the time and that you took part in what God has or is busy doing here at X Church Online. Now, remember, if you are watching this stream live right now, I want to invite you to our Hey meeting. It's just five to ten minutes going to happen right now after this service, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. You'll see that all the in the the sign up details are all in the comments, so you can just go on there, find the details to sign up to that meeting. It's a Zoom meeting, but you don't. 
don't need Zoom. You can just follow the link. So um, come and join us and just say hi really, really quickly. That would be wonderful to see you. Now, a very big shout out to everybody who joined us today. We had people from all over the place. Uh, a, a lot of people joining us from Durban, from uh, Centurion. I see somebody joined us from Austri Austria, um, France. Uh, we had somebody from Germany, Cape Town, the USA, even people from Mafia King, and um, I see Zimbabwe, China, Poland, goodness, we're from all over the place, and I see lastly from London joining us, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time. We look forward to see you Wednesday, and remember, if you're watching Wednesday online, you can also share that stream, but if you're not making it for Wednesday, our revival evening, I'll see you next week, same time, same place. God bless.